things about this problem is you don't have to figure out the statements, but you're given that FB, FB bisects AFC, measure of angle two equals measure of angle four. That's what you're trying to prove. That's down here in the last step. What I want you to do, this is the only thing that those are kind of missing there. I want you to do your best to figure out what might go in one, two, three, four, and five here. I'm going to step away for just 30 seconds, 60 seconds to see if something, if you can come up with any of these, some of these, none of these, just to kind of see where you're at with proofs. But uh, take a look and uh, you can just write them down or you can drop them in the chat. If you want to type them, it's totally up to you. And then we'll, we'll come back and work through this together. I'll be right back with you. Okay, why? Well, I'm um, sorry, not Wyatt. You're Hudson. I'm thinking of your name. So your brother's name. So Hudson, um, this is a two-column proof. Did you look at these at all in class, or just direct proof? No, I haven't seen that before. You've not seen this. Okay, so this is this is where again having a little more information in your book would help. A two-column proof is the most common type of proof that students typically work through in this course. On the left is the statement. On the right is the reason. So do you remember from class what usually comes first in a proof? Like what is the first thing that you 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 rewrite? Doesn't matter what kind of proof you're doing, you you always rewrite. Um I'm not sure. The givens or the given. If it's given, it usually comes first. Does that make make sense to you? To put the givens first. So. Did, did you guys do that in the direct direct proof? Um, I don't exactly remember learning about that. Maybe it was like he explained it like a different way, or like didn't use the word. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. And and I'm uh, we're just gonna try this. The givens always come first. Okay. Now, the next statement here in this proof. Is angle one is congruent to angle two. So there's angle one, there's angle two. Now, what you cannot do is you cannot just say, well, they look the same. You have to have a reason for why they're congruent. And this is where most students get, get stuck. But what does it mean if ray FB bisects angle A, AFC? And FB equally divides the angle AFC. Yes. And and what a lot of students struggle with is like, well, what do I even put as a reason? It's definition. It's almost always a definition of, and it's the thing that you just did. It's an angle bisector. Definition of an angle bisector. Did you have you talked about anything like that in class? Definitions. Definitions. Um I think so. Okay. If you want, we can do something else besides proof. I don't mean to bore you with these, but I'm just trying to find something we can work on. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not sure. Because, like, this doesn't really look like something I've done. So I'm a little confused. Okay. Let's try something different then. Because... It's not good for us to do something that's totally different than what you've been working on. So give me just a moment to pull up uh, some other stuff that would be good for us to work on.
Okay. Um, this feels like it could be closer to what you've been working on in, in your class here. All right, so here's a problem. It says, use the diagram below to answer the following question. So it's, uh, it's some sort of a pentagonal prism on its side. The top is a, sorry, not, not a pentagonal prism, uh, just a prism that's on its side. The, uh, it says, name all segments parallel to X, XT, segment XT. So it's always good to kind of go, okay, where is XT in the drawing? XT is the pole or the vertical there. Okay, now parallel is really important. Have you guys talked about that in class? What something means if it's parallel? That would just be like, like wouldn't WS be parallel to XT? Absolutely. WS is also parallel. It's got a little line above it. Now it's going in the same direction. Okay, and there's a bit more to it, but that's good enough for now. Do you see any other ones that are parallel to XT? Uh, ZV and YU. ZV and YU. Very good. Now, one of the things that could be unclear here, but the reason they're parallel is you can actually draw a plane through XT and WS, XT and ZV, XT and, and YU. You can actually draw a plane where they both go through. They're actually on the same plane. So parallel lines, and this is very important, parallel lines, sorry for all the red, parallel lines have to be on the same plane. Like there has to be a plane that exists that they are both on. Mm -hmm. Like in the case of WX and XT, you can see they're on the front plane. XT and YU, they're on the, the right plane. The, the, the issue with ZV is that it's not drawn, but there's a diagonal plane that goes through goes through those there. Is that yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so let me see if you can really quickly tell me the answers to B. Z, um, Z, Y. Uh, v, U. Okay, agreed. Um, I can't really tell if W, X would be because like I'm not sure. Yeah, it's like, not drawn well, angle. but... It's not drawn well, but it is. Let's assume that it is. Okay. And then ST too. Yes, ST as well. Good. Okay. All right. So we're going to skip C. I'm going to reframe the problem here. We'll start looking at C. Sorry, D. Let's look at D here. Name a plane parallel to plane F to you. So the first thing is by definition of plane, you need three non-collinear points for a plane. Hopefully you saw that on your, your definitions. Mm -hmm. So STU, if you needed a name for that, it could be the floor. So would that be like y x w now could you use what are what are, what's another set of letters that you could use for the top uh y z w right you have to use three letters very good okay how about e could you do that one for me please uh w x t or W S T. Good. Good. Okay. All right. So uh, F and G. I think this is the hardest one to explain. Uh, it's easier if we if we're physically in a classroom to explain F and G. Um, do you know? Do you have a definition of skew that you like? No, I don't. I don't know what that means. Ah, good, good. Okay, so I'm going to give you an answer, and then hopefully we'll be able to use the answer to figure this out. So SW is this pole. Okay, so an ex a, a skew line is, an example of a skew line would be VU. VU. So here's SW. Here's VU. Now, the first thing is that they never intersect. Do you agree with that so far? Mm-hmm. 
like that they will never hit each other. Yeah. It's the it's the post and then the uh you know the baseboard in your house. However, parallel lines never intersect, right? Parallel lines never intersect. The difference is that skew lines are not on the same plane. There's no way to draw a plane that goes through both WS and VU. There's just no way. Now, if you're if you're struggling to visualize this, I can try to do something to help you visualize this. I think I got it. Okay. So give me another segment that is skewed to SW. There are several options. Uh, UT. Yes, UT is a good one. Any other ones that you see? Um, YX. Yes. And, and there's Y. Yes. Good. Okay. I'm gonna reframe this for G because I think I think it, it, sometimes having all these lines just really can be a can be a hassle here. So G is UT. There is UT. All right. Give me something skew to UT. WS. Okay. What else? Oh yeah. Here. Sorry, what? Yeah, give me another one skew to UT. Uh, Z, Y. Did you just send us to the maps here? Yes. Good. Good. Okay. Now, tell me about VS. Is VS skew to UT, why or why not? Sorry, could you repeat that? Why it was talking to me? Yeah, let me know. Is everything if you need to break away, you're always allowed to just say, hey, Matthew, I need a minute or two. Um, no, it's okay. He just needed his phone and he was asking a couple questions. Okay. VS is VS skew to UT. Uh, no. No. Why not? What What is the issue? Uh, because they will eventually intersect. Yes. So you have to have this definition down. Now, how do you how do you remember important stuff like one day you're going to get a phone, I would assume, and you're going to have a phone number. How do you plan to remember your phone number? How do you remember your address, right? Like how do you remember important stuff in your world? Like what do you do to learn stuff? Um, are you like asking me personally or like? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because that, oh. that the answer to however you learn stuff is the answer to the question, how are you going to learn what skew is? Because skew and parallel are not the same. Uh, parallel lines are on the same plane and they never intersect. So just be careful. Um, you know, how, um, however you want to remember stuff, you have to be careful of. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess I just kind of remember things after repeatedly doing them or hearing them. Okay. Like, I hear my address a lot, I guess. Okay. And I guess it just, like, eventually just becomes something I remember, like, all the time. Okay, let's uh, let's move on here. Um, this is a backwards question. So what we did first was a forwards question. I want you to do your best here based on the definitions that we just learned to put the correct answers in each of these here. Um, like you'd either type them in the chat or wait until the end to give them all to me. Okay, can I quickly just write down the definition for skill? Sure, sure. So here's the definition for skew.
Okay. Okay, so the uh, the answers here are parallel, meaning they never intersect. Intersecting meaning they do intersect or skew. They never intersect, which is the same as parallel. So the difference is that parallel lines are on the same plane where skew lines are never on the same plane. So just, just work through A, B, C, D, and E. Put down your best answer either in the chat or tell me here at the end. Uh, just type the answers in the chat. Yeah. All right. Very good here. All right. A, B, and B, C are intersecting. Okay, so colors here. A, E, and B, F. Okay, sorry, I, I have to I have to study each one time myself. Uh, uh, that's correct. All right, so for D, A, B, C, which is the floor, and A, B, F, which is like the right side of the tent, they intersect. What what would you call that intersection? Would you think of a name for that intersection? You've got like like you you've know, got that bottom. And then the other one comes kind of comes down like that. How do they intersect? What would you call this right here? Um, I'm not really sure. Like plane. So so planes. This is another definition. Planes intersect in a line like that. Okay. All right. Good job on this. Those, those those are all correct that you sent over. Very good. Um, I'm gonna just throw I'm gonna throw some more problems here to see where you're at. Like maybe you already know these. Maybe you have no idea what I'm talking about here. Um, unfortunately, I just got to step away again to tend to something. It said, uh, make sure something doesn't catch on fire. But uh, you can just look at these, and then we'll talk about them in a minute. If you're if you have no idea, um, that's okay too. But I'll be right back with you.
All right, Hudson, have you seen any of this before? Any idea what I'm talking about here? Um, I do think I've seen it before, but I don't know how to get the answer. Okay. Or like Good. That's fine. I'll give you some explanation here. So typically it's two parallel lines, but in this in these problems, they're just drawing two lines that kind of go in the same direction. And then they cut them by what's called a transversal. Okay. So the transversal is the one that is the single line that's going in the, the wrong direction here of the other. So you can, I'll just put it like a T for that transversal. This is the transversal, transversal, transversal. So it's another definition, transversal, and then transversal like that. So that's the first thing that you 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 will, let's get another definition, right? So when you got this transversal, there are two sides to the transversal. There's there's the, like, and then they don't give it, they don't give it like a left and a right, but you can call it like this is a side over here on the left. And it's and it's it's everything. It's like this is all a side. And then there's also a side on the right, which you've got right here. Now the issue is that. If the transversal is going the other way, let me draw that here. That's why I don't give it a name. I don't say like, oh, it's, if you got two lines going like that, and then the transversal is going this way, the side, you know, you have a side up here and a side down here. So the side is like, you know, based on the transversal. It's like mm -hmm. when you're driving on the road, you know what the left and the right is. We always perceive left to be left of us and right to be right of us. But to someone, you know, maybe on a Google, Google Maps view, you you might be on a road like this, or you might be on a road like like this, depending on orientation. Is that okay so far? Mm -hmm. All right. Now the books also go into, and let me uh, kind of do this again here. So this is, yeah, you cut by a transversal. They use words like interior, interior, exterior, 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 and exterior. Have you seen this before? Mm, no, I don't think so. Okay. So this is this is where it yeah you know, it's very definition heavy. It's very definition heavy. So we're gonna look at these one at a time, and we're gonna try to do exactly what I've just done here, which is first talk about whether they are on the same side of the transversal, or if they are on opposite sides of the transversal. So this is the transversal. Angle one is this angle here. Angle two is this angle here. Are they on the same side of the transversal or opposite sides of the transversal? Opposite. opposite. So we use the word alternate when they are on the opposite. We don't use opposite in this part of the course. It's alternate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's talk about where they are. Up here is the exterior. Down here is the exterior, and here is the interior. Where are they? In the interior. So we say these are alternate interior angles. Okay. Let's do another one. So here's the transversal again. Are these on the same side or the opposite side of the transversal? Um, opposite. Opposite, so we call that alternate. Alternate, and then are the angles in the interior or the exterior? Exterior. So these are called alternate exterior 
angles. Any thoughts on that? Mm -mm. Okay, these are just pure definitions. All right, now let's look at um, let's look at this one here. All right, are these uh, are these on the same side or opposite sides of the transversal? Same side. So we call them same side. Are they in the interior or the exterior? Both. Both. So when they're in both, we have a problem. Same side, interior, exterior, that doesn't make any sense. So this whole thing becomes what is called corresponding angles. And you don't need to know why for the moment. You don't even need to remember this, but there is a better name than this, especially when it's confusing. Because it is, it's like the one's interior, one's exterior. Mm -hmm. All right, um, here is one for you to look at on your own and see if you can give me the best words for this. What is the best wording for these two? It's probably like same side interior angle. Yes, same side interior, and that is correct. There is no other way to describe those. Here's one more for you to think about. So these are, uh, sorry, that's a different thing. There's lots of definitions. Um, I right, want you try this one, please. Same side exterior. You got it. Yeah, same side exterior. Okay. Um, now that we have, we've sort of done the forwards, let's try the backwards here. So let's do these together, um, meaning, well, kind of together. I'll have you just give me the answer to part A. Give me the transversal, it is a single letter. Uh, L. That is L. Line L or L. Okay. Now just give me corresponding angles. That is the same side interior slash exterior. So just give me one pair of corresponding angles. They've got to be the same side of the transverse, but one's in the interior, one's in the exterior. Right. Five or six. So Good, good catch. So there's a there's a little bit more. So I'm going to actually give them to you. Here. Angle one and angle three are corresponding. Angle five and angle seven are corresponding. Angle two and angle four are corresponding. Angle six and angle eight are corresponding. Do oh, you notice see. anything about the pattern? Um, it's like you skip one angle. So I kind of, I try to describe it this way. Corresponding angles are like this. Let's say you're somewhere and you have a friend who's also somewhere. And it's like, it's like the towns are built the same. And you're like, what do you see in the top right? And he's like, I see a, you know what a circle K is? Mm-hmm. Okay, I just asked him because I don't know if you for sure. And he's like, yeah, I also see a circle K, right? Well, the circle K is both top right and top right. 
that's corresponding. They correspond to each other. And you're like, all right, well, what do you see in the uh, lower left? Oh, I see a 7-Eleven in the lower left. Uh, what do you see top left? Oh, I see a, you know, a church, maybe. Okay. And you're like, all right, you know, what do you see in the top? Oh, I see another church. Okay. That's corresponding. What do you see in the lower right? I see, uh, you know, a car. The corresponding means that in the same relative position, you see the same thing. Okay. Does that make some sense to you? A little. Yeah. Well, you're going to see this again. So the good news is even if you don't have any idea what I'm talking about today, you will get an opportunity to see this again and uh, probably make more sense the second time you see it. All right. Uh, how about, uh, I don't know, give me consecutive interior angles. That means they're same side also. Same side. It that be six and seven? Yes. And then it'd also be like angle two and angle like three. Okay. Um, any other thoughts or questions? for me on this topic, getting ready to close out here for today. I don't think so. Okay, so uh, is Monday, Wednesday still working for you as a regular time? Uh, I think so. Good, good. So for Monday, you get the emails at 4.30. If you haven't noticed, they're always sent 30 minutes ahead of time. Please, please, please take a picture of what you're working on. Send a picture of your homework, what's going on in your book, class notes, you know, I'll take anything. So homework, even if it's done, book, work, something going on in your book, your notes, I'll take anything. This will be better long-term for you to be doing that. Now, next Monday is a holiday, so we probably will not be doing math. So we'll have to do this for next Wednesday, but, uh, well, I'll talk to mom and dad and see what they want to do. Probably will not do anything on Monday, at least not at the 